Good evening. This is the regular meeting of the Planning Board of the Village of Tops Ferry on Thursday evening, October 5, 2017. We have five, uh, four items on our agenda this evening. I would uh, make a motion to open the meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Thank you. <clears throat> Item number one is to adopt the minutes for the Planning Board meeting of September 7. I have reviewed the minutes and did not have any questions or changes. Okay. No comments. Anybody else? No, all good. Good. I would then move that we adopt the minutes for the planning board meeting of September 7, 2017. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Thank you very much. The second item on our agenda is the Rivertown Square project having to do with uh, a change in the original, original plan that was approved to continuation of a public hearing for amended site plan approval for proposed relocation of the trash management area. This is a public hearing, so I would move that we open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Thank you. I don't see anyone here representing the applicant. I don't either. Um, I think in that case that we will we will hold this over. I see no reason to discuss it without the applicant here to respond to some of the issues that have been raised at the previous meetings. Is Jonathan will ever meet? Yeah. Unless they show up. Unless they show up. Okay. We'll be here for a little while. <laughs> not, not very long. Not a very long time. <laughs> so I would make a motion if needed to uh, hold this over to the November meeting. Is there a second? Sure. Second. All in favor? Right, thank you. Item number three on the agenda is it's listed as 364 Ashford Avenue slash Allen Street parcel. It's a continuation of public hearing for proposed resubdivision of 364 Ashford Avenue lot to remove rear portion and join with a portion of 11 Pearl Street. It's a public hearing. I would move that we open the public hearing. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Good evening. Pat Steinschneider, Gotham Design and Community Development, here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, we've been before you for a couple months. We haven't really been able to show anything for, I think, the last two meetings because we were waiting for the flat map. Um, the flat map has now been prepared, and I believe that you've gotten a copy of it. I understand you didn't get it um, soon enough to do a thorough review on it. Um, but I think it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, Dobbs requires two steps in this, preliminary subdivision and then the final subdivision. Um, obviously, there, I, I've already just had a conversation with uh, George and White about um, needing to define better the easement that's leaving the property for the storm sewer and, uh, and uh, sanitary sewer. Um, but with the idea that those, anything that needs to be put on this map can be probably done very quickly, um, what we'd like to do is, uh, if possible, have this be a, you, the code actually allows you to do a preliminary and final in one step. So maybe we'd be able to do that at the November meeting. <clears throat> Patty, you need to show the location of the house, don't you? Um, we have to provide a site plan, which we've done. On this, for this? On the the plot, plot. I think the plot needs it. Hmm? I think the plot needs it. Um, usually, no. The way it's, it's always been done before by us is we provide two drawings, a site plan and a subdivision plan. The subdivision plan, uh, unless it was something where we were actually getting approval of the location of the house on it, this, is, this action is nothing but to create the lot itself. The site plan is what the planning board has to answer the question, can a house that complies with code be located on this site? And the site plan has demonstrated that it's been fairly reviewed, actually. And um, I'll stop talking until Darius gets back. To let you guys know. Um, well, this, this, this is uh, what, what we've been asking to have so that we can move the, process, move the process forward. Thank you for that. I think it would be you know, appropriate that we hold this over and give our experts a chance to look at this and right. do you want us to show the house on the flat map? Let, let, let's talk offline about it and we'll make sure all the requirements of the code are met and then so okay. we'll have to talk about it now and go through it. We can so, go through it another day. I have a couple of questions if we could. Sure. So just then we'll talk about the remaining 
the existing house, right? So in putting in this when you're saying subdivision. When you existing house, you're talking about this building? Uh, no, the one. This one? Are we, we're talking about Allen Street or we're talking? We're only talking about Allen Street. Right. right, okay. So talking about Allen Street, you have the existing house. What is non-conforming about this? This house? Yeah. No existing house on his lot. The, the existing house on the lower left corner there yeah. is an existing house owned by someone else who is selling a piece of his right. property to him. Yeah. I know, right. but still it appears still to be... conforming. Is it in any way non-conforming, that existing house? Um, we have made no assessment other than to determine that it will have a 7,500 square foot lot and 5,000 square foot zone. Um, the I mean, you're essentially making a side yard for it that is different than what's existing. Um, but or, in an area that requires much more than we've got a 27 foot side yard. That's the Pearl Street address. That's the rear yard, yeah. and it still has a 25 foot rear yard setback. Okay, and how about front yard? That's Pearl Street. Street. We're not affecting. I know you're not affecting it, but you are. We're touching it. I mean, essentially, we're touching the um, the property. We're not touching the house. I know we're you're touching not. Touching the lot. I'm just asking if you could answer the question: How what is the front yard on front the Pearl Street? Yard, my understanding would be the uh, side facing Pearl Street. And it has and a three foot front yard. Is that right? Yeah, it's an existing non conforming three foot setback. Okay. And the side yard of ten foot on one side, ten foot six, and twenty eight foot one on the other. Point one feet, sorry. Yeah. But a three foot front yard. Has nothing to do with our application can't move the house. I'm not asking. I'm just saying, you know, as to whether it is under worse condition than it was. So this is the, the minimum rear yard no is what? 25.5. And you're leaving 27 foot one. Correct. 27.1 feet. Okay. All right. Yeah, that, that's the one that pertains, I think, to have here that you, if we chopped off that 25 feet and then created a non-conformity, it also still has the required area. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And uh, you've done topo on this. We've submitted to you topo drawings prepared by the engineer. So, and this existing house, this existing house, is it still conforming, calculating yes. in steep slopes? Yes. Okay. That's what I've been showing to you. So the only non-conformity, existing non-conformity of this house is the front yard is three right. feet. Okay. You are creating a non-conformity, I think, to the house that abuts us. Ashford has the rear yard setback. So I think, if I understand it right from my prior discussions, I don't see any dimension described on here. The um, we would, as part of granting the subdivision approval, the planning board is being asked to waive the, the setback requirements for the existing house that's facing. That's correct. That was identified, I think, in June. So the, a little so the new rear lot is the rear setback. Yeah. Compliance and non-compliance, I think, should be included with this plan. So nothing to do with the lot that we're creating, but what effect it has on the neighborhood. Yeah, and the other thing that's helpful, if you uh, just, obviously the topo is so interesting. But what's helpful, if you, on the Allen Street lot, if you would, could identify the, um, the area within which a house could be located. A building on the Sure. But that's what I was asking for. Yeah, I think that's what that's just an envelope. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to show the connections for the sewer and water, too? They, they show, have to show the easement areas that the connections would be part of the uh, actual site plan, the right. actual location. No, but the assumption that you need is for state law to show the connections. What is the required rear yard? Yeah, we're going to open the house to the main, wherever it is, or where the sewer, where the sewer main is and the water main is. Yeah. Well, we show sewers. We're not the one that you're, I think, concerned about is the water main, which we will show where you know that there is a water main out front that we can tie into. Does the sewer connection show? Oh, yeah, there it is. It's the uh, proposed sewer. I got you. Yeah, proposed drain. I see. That'll be an easement over or over the other two lots, I guess? That's correct. I need to see those easements, too. Yeah. You want to see the written description? 
The whole yeah. even with the Schedule A. There was also out of over two properties, two owners, or is it the same owner? Two same owner. Okay. Two lots, though. Two lots. Two, yeah, lots. two separate lots. Otherwise, it wouldn't be an easement, right? It's actually three lots. Three lots. Well, five, twelve, four, thirteen. Right, but, but we're also, you know, what we're trying to do this is follow the procedures that were laid out by this board, which I think are good ones, which is that we're doing this incrementally. So the first step was to create the lot and have it separate created from what's below. The next step with subdivision on the lots below is, as I understand it from previous conversation, is to collect those into one parcel. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's something that we'll be doing next. Um, but the description, um, the easement description will, will represent that it goes across specific uh, tax map lots. You know, so that should, that'll be clear in that. There was oh, a, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, uh, you, this plot shows proposed new property line behind the Allen Street property. Is that being applied for now or not? Yes. And there was discussion about moving that back and allowing the retaining wall to the Allen Street property, and also that would give it the adequate rear yard. It's, it gives you more. It's not quite the required setback. It was, it was something that we proposed. It didn't seem to get a favorable response from this board. But if that, if my read of it was wrong and people said we don't think we want to do that, um, we can we can have them change that to follow the uh, review. But we, we answered the question because Palmer, uh, Palmer, Han Engineering, George Palmer above Han Engineering, uh, not Palmer Engineering, not yet, um, basically pointed out that we should be defining what's happening with that retaining wall. And I think the assumption was it would be we're not proposing removing it, we're proposing keeping it. Um, and then we could do where the lot followed that. The other possibility is this would be finally used us anyway. It would be to give an easement to the house on uh, Ashford to that retaining wall. Exclusive use of the property, and, and then you know you've got clean lines with this. Yeah. Up to you guys. You yeah. Guys like just from my own curiosity because I don't really think any of this is all that consequential but if it's if this is just about subdividing the lot should there be any information about whether retaining walls are being removed or not like isn't that all stuff that or the stockade fence to be removed isn't that all stuff that's going to ultimately happen in site plan so I mean if you're going to go back and clean this up would you even say that you're re removing retaining walls or not I mean, we it's normally like would, would not, but that was something we were asked to put on the drawing. Huh. So we, you know, it's you, the, this is much simpler than no, I other, you know, in Irvington where we're selling lots that are very complex properties, making sure that our obligations for who's coming next and buying that lot is critical. This is a little different because you're subdividing for the owner. So he's going to be the person who's affected by this. It's not like we're going to a third party, but there's nothing that says that Mr. Baker couldn't turn around tomorrow and uh, you know, sell it. And if he did so, um, if it mattered to this planning board that such and such retaining will be removed, um, we certainly would want to have that reported on the, uh, on the, on the final report. It's more for my own education than anything. I yeah. just did, I didn't. No, I'm indifferent. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's a consequence. I was really just curious. Patty, by creating um, the, the rear lot of the, 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 the sorry, the lot on Ashford Avenue, the rear yard setback is how big now will be created? How, how long? How wide will it be? I think it's a, it will be 10 feet now. Okay, so that we require 25. Correct. But notwithstanding the minimum setback, all structures adjacent to residential shall be at a minimum 10 feet from the property line. Which you are. You meet that, but I don't think you meet the 25, do you? We don't meet the 25 now. So, 13 and there? Um, I think what we would need is approvals for site planning because that can be modified in this process. I don't want to create a, a lot that has that creates a nonconformity without a variance from the zoning board. You, the planning board, I think, there has the power as part of granting subdivision. To waive uh, aspects of the zoning ordinance, but we, we should know what we're. 
The only thing that we need is to give us the cover, block coverage of the building. Yeah, we need a legend of of all require all all requirements met by the, the creating these essentially three well, lots. Actually what I'll do is I'll do a chart that so shows this one I don't think you want this on the flat. This would be something that we would submit for you to act on in the application. We'll provide a chart that lists the three well properties. We'll the three include, lots. We'll include the existing neighbor's property. Yeah. yeah. What that is. Yeah. This property that we created, the lot that will automatically exist that's just this yes. at that point, yep. and then the rest. And that way, I mean, there's nothing, there's no rest. There's nothing else there, right? Yeah, there's nothing else. But yeah, so do those still... three lots and charge form how they meet all requirements, including setbacks, well, coverage, yeah. impervious, all that, if you would. That's not right. Provided for Ed so he can understand, and the board can understand, what's existing, like for instance, that three foot front yard on the Pearl Street one. Indicate that right. it's existing, not conforming. No, well, what we can do is we can say required and provided. Okay. And then we'll differentiate between provided, existing, and created. Uh, or waiver variance needed. Okay. What is the help. minimum lot size? Hmm? The minimum lot size on, this is Virginia, but. I don't think on DT there's any. Ellen. There's no, no Virginia. minimum lot yeah. size for, for the Ashton Avenue property. It's 5,000 yeah. square feet on the, on the Allen and Pearl Street. Okay. So. Right. I guess it seems since we're discussing this to get some read on people's perception about the retaining wall. To me, I mean, not having been behind the Allen Street property, is that is the perception that that belongs to that property in terms of slope, the retaining wall, everything. So it seems to me odd to slice off whatever it is, eight feet of it, that one would presume is that is part of that property. In addition to the issue of the not the rear yard being non-conforming. But then you make Allen Street not. Big enough, right? Oh, no, 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 But again, it's, it's, as the, this board has done many times before, there's a difference when the, in other words, if we were creating this to a neighbor without their permission, obviously we couldn't do it because they wouldn't give permission, but the, the idea here is that the owner of this property is looking for this so that he can do development of the property. It's not something that he's, you know. But he's not going to keep it, so. Well, he's going to do the, you know, unless he changes. So, this, this property is, would be the next we're coming in to discuss. And that, right, but the single family house is definitely so. This one, yeah, right. he's not going to live there himself. Right. Right. So, we. So, I think Javier's suggestion makes a lot of sense. Well, we, uh, we agree. We, that's why we proposed it several months ago. But the board indicated they, they know it was a good idea. But I think it's a great idea. I mean, it gives us a lot more latitude, so probably, you know, it's a great idea. <laughs> so Patty's idea that I said, he, yeah, said he so. thinks is a good idea. <laughs> I think, I think, you know, how many is it? Well, mostly Ed says it's a good idea. Patty, can you provide the uh, documents that will exchange the land between the Allen Street parcel and the Pearl Street parcel? I know you gave me the, the letter that's indicated they consented to it. I'd like to see the documents that, before we even consider the plat, the documents that will be executed. Not to be contemporary contract for sale. Contract for sale of that portion of the property that's being given to the Allen Street. And also that'll be contemporaneous with the transfer of the filing of the documents will be contemporaneous with the signing of the plat. We don't want to create a lot for property that's not owned by the owner of the Allen Street parcel. Yeah, I'm not sure how that so you, it just happened at the same I time. Your concern. I mean, you probably can advise me on it. When you're doing something like that, how where does the closing take place first and then you Yeah, buy? yeah. You'll have to transfer the property to, to them. It'll happen, you know, maybe the day before if you can do it before the plat signed. Because there'll be approval conditioned upon that happening. Right. The plat won't be signed by the chair until until the transfers occur. 
so it's like a it's tinkers and it's a chance. So we have the closing, we come and get the signature, and then we can file the letter. Correct. We also got to get DOH approval too. Right, but well, they'll do it um, whenever we bring that in. We've got the adequate information. I think we need that first, don't we? We, we need to have it on there before the chairman signs. Yeah. yeah. Can you or George speak to the proposed drain here? And the property is supposed to be, I mean, nothing's supposed to shed. This is a storm drain, I assume, right? Yeah. Right. But isn't each property supposed to have its own water retention? We will. Um, but we also have to always anticipate 500 year storm. What happens to the water? Does it blow out people's properties? So there'll be an overflow on the system, and in the event of a cataclysmic event, it won't do damage. It'll overflow and go into a closed uh, place. We have to we have to accommodate a 100-year storm on the property. All right. So, and how about the existing property? When you say the existing, well, the, so the existing house, you are essentially creating a the Pearl Street. The Pearl Street House, you're now setting its new, whatever it is, rear yard, and it has no storm drain. Well, that's what the uh, storm water is for. That but overflow you, don't need, you don't need it on each property. I'm talking about the fact that this property that doesn't currently have storm drainage accommodated on it, we're taking property away. We're going to be treating this, collecting this, improving the situation. But I think what, if I understand what, what Javi is asking is, what are we then going to do about this property Correct. that's not served, which we're not changing, nor do we own? Unless right. there's a flooding condition or some problem, it, it's, not, it's not doing anything now. It so at but, what point but is the there... state tells us that whenever we add impervious surface to the lot, we mm -hmm. have to deal with that storm water. Okay. That one, we're not adding any impervious mm -hmm. surface. That is. On the new lot, we are going to add it, and we're going to deal with it, you know, maintain, retain, you know, 100 year storm, and then their overflow will go down into the uh, catch basin. Right. So, this, and what's the expectation about this proposed drain? It happens at the time of the addition, the development of the property, not yes. as part of this plot. Right. Okay. That's when the appropriate service All right. Yeah. And as we learned when the cliff collapsed on the tracks, you don't start at the top and work at the bottom. You start at the bottom. Any other questions for now? Or you you understand what the next I, steps are? I think I've got a good understanding of what we need to do. Good. And, um, we'll see you next month. We'll, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Um, continue. continue the public hearing to uh, the next meeting. All in favor? All right. The last item, the fourth and last item on our agenda tonight, 199 Washington Avenue, public hearing for site plan approval for proposed new in-ground pool. Please. Where's the tea box on that? It's up, 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 way, 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 way up there. Okay. I, I believe it's three hundred. New water hazards. <laughs> so what? What? That's your third shot that hits the pool. Mm. No, it's it's third shot. <laughs> it's third shot. <laughs> I'll, I'll drive that. Excuse me. <laughs>
sorry, the Arbor Vitae is on the south side of the property? Right here? Yeah. So we added these into our previous I see. Got it. Um, is there deer pressure in that area? It's, uh, the yard is pretty much uh, okay, other than the golf course there. You can talk about those farms. It, I, I live up, up the hill, and they wouldn't last two months. They'd be completely eaten by the deer. That's what I'm asking. You talk about the farms. I just don't know, you know, maybe you're fenced in enough to protect it. Maybe there's enough traffic there that it keeps them away. I, I just don't know how much deer pressure there is. I don't want to make this an issue unless I just want to warn you that, you know, not very far away, they wouldn't survive. Those are going to be within the fence, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the fence follows the retaining wall and then returns to the corner of the house and then comes up to this walkway off in the patio, right? Yeah. So how functionally, how high is that fence then? Uh, the normal deer fence is six feet. Okay. That should, that should do it. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Except for the ones that come across the street, across the street <laughs> in the front yard. <laughs> you can walk in through the front door. Walk in through the front door. Come out. or issues? Uh, if not, I would move we close the public hearing. Is there a second? All in favor? Uh, I could find the motion. I could find the resolution and read it. I had it when I left home. Thank you. Uh, Village of South Ferry Planning Board resolution granting site plan approval for the construction of an outdoor pool together with related site work, 199 Washington Avenue. Whereas Paul Gadansky, on behalf of Mark and Susan Katz, owners, have applied for site plan approval to construct an in ground pool and make other site improvements at 199 at Washington Avenue and be noted on tax map assessment maps as section 4, block 1340. Lot 23, and whereas the following plans and documents were submitted as part of the application, it lists those documents. Whereas, as the planning board is familiar with the site and surrounding area and the proposed improvement plans, and, and at their meeting of October 5, 2017, held a duly noticed public hearing and all comments con considered. Whereas, the planning board has reviewed the staff report prepared by James J. Hahn Engineering, dated September 28, 2017, for the subject application, whereas the proposed proposed site improvement for this single family property is a type two action under the State Environmental Quality Review Act and is therefore exempt from further environmental review. Therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Board of the Village of Ferry hereby grants site plan approval for the subject application conditioned on the following one, all applicable provisions of the village, state, village, county, and state regulations should be met. Two, prior to the issuance of building permit, all required site plan and engineering reviews Fees shall be paid in all items in the consulting engineer's memorandum dated September 28, 2017 shall be addressed to his satisfaction. Three, the following language shall be added to the plan. 
quote, approved subject to all requirements and conditions of a resolution dated October 5, 2017, of the Planning Board of the Village, Town Square, New York, any change or ratio modifications or revisions to this plan absent reapproval from the Planning Board to avoid the, avoid the disapproval. Okay. Yeah, I just have one question. I have a question. I thought one of the, did we have Lucille review the landscape plan already? I did. Uh, we didn't get Lucille to do it. Huh? I did the review of the landscape plan. Okay. We didn't, we didn't ask for okay. Lucille. Okay, but plan. that's done. Yeah. 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 Be it further resolved that this resolution shall have an effective date of October 5 to 7, 2017. I make the motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? I move re-adjourn. Second. 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 <laughs>